ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise belongs to allah we praise him we seek his forgiveness and his guidance we seek refuge in allah from the evils of our own egos and the evil results of our own deeds anyone whom allah guides then no one can lead him astray and anyone whom Allah leaves to stray then there is none that can guide him and i bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship and no gods in reality except the law who is alone having no partners and i bear witness that muhammad the son of abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his final messenger allah says what could mean in the quran o you who believe fear allah Respect the law as it is right to be feared and respected and don't you dare die except that you die as Muslims it's a threat He also says what could mean oh mankind speaking to everyone muslim and non-muslim Fear your lord or be conscious of your lord who created you all from one soul Adam and created from that soul its mate Eve and raised up and spread from the two of them many men and women and fear Allah be conscious of Allah the one whom you ask things for and don't cut ties with the wombs that bore you indeed Allah above you all is laying in watch he also says what could mean oh you who believe fear Allah or be remindful that you will be accountable to Allah and in light of this accountability say a word now that goes straight to the point if you do this Allah will make right something you did wrong and forgive you your sins your crimes and whomsoever is already obeying Allah and obeying his messenger has already achieved the highest aspiration anyone could hope to achieve as for what follows then we have to understand and know that the best speech is the speech of Allah the Quran so if you don't know it you don't know much and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if you don't have it if you're not following it you're misguided and the most evil of affairs the worst things you can do are the things that you yourself come up with these are the worst things each one of these things are things that lead us astray and everything that leads us astray will eventually lead us to the hellfire we were talking we wanted to talk about the last day that was the the purpose of this lecture here and what about the last day some of the signs of the last day the last day is a very important aspect for every believer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and mentions all in the Quran not number of times in the Quran those who believe in Allah wa yawmil akhir those who believe in Allah and the last day 
principle, fundamental. Why is it called the last day? Because there is no maghrib. That's the first thing people have to understand. It's a pretty simple thing, but most people don't think about it that way. It is a never-ending day. There will not come a maghrib. Because maghrib does what? Sorry? I can't hear you. It ends the day and it begins a new day. In fact, Maghrib is the beginning of a new. The night comes before the day. So that's the first thing we have to understand. As far as the signs, the signs of the last day, then a lot of the minor signs are the ones that we see and we guess about and we feel that most of the minor signs of the last day have already come. And I'm going to list some of them for us to, to un try to understand. It's supposedly a pretty comprehensive list. The main one that I would like people to understand is Qabd al-Ulama, that knowledge is going to become rare on the planet. Okay? Knowledge is going to disappear. And it's not going to disappear by you forgetting. This is a very important principle. It's not going to be lost by you forgetting. But rather, those people that do know will die. Until those that do know are no longer around. And only the ignorant ones will remain. So this is one of the first signs. And this is something we see happening more and more. As the senior scholars who are like, you know, encyclopedics, you know, they know so much. May Allah preserve them and rahimahumullah are all passing away. And you're left with their students who recognize and realize they are nothing and very far, far away from the teachers, from the shuyukh. It's amazing, sometimes we tell people, don't call me sheikh. But people don't understand that. They think you're being modest. But the reality is you're not being modest. I'd love to be a sheikh. But what a real sheikh is, we are very far from that. So we're in a stage now that knowledge is being lost. However, if we just follow the first command in the Qur'an, what is the first command in the Qur'an? What? Iqra. What does that mean? Read. The qadr of Allah comes down, the dua goes up, it struggles with it, and it can actually change it, can it not? Rabbi zidni ilma. If we make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge, we can possibly live and not be amongst those that the last days come upon them. It's going to be a great fitna and a great trial. And this is the only thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran for you to ask an increase of, to increase you in knowledge. And we notice that he said, that in the last days, those that have knowledge will no longer be there. So we ask Allah to increase us in knowledge, and we hope to follow the first order of Allah, which is to read. And read the Qur'an so that we would have more knowledge, as we state every time when we give this khutbat al-hajjah, the best speech is what? Come on guys, what's the best speech? Speech of Allah, the Qur'an. So that's the thing that we should be reading. One of the other signs of the last day is that the man, someone trying to hold fast to his religion, to his deen, is going to be like someone holding hot coals in his hand. Okay, it's going to be very difficult for him to remain steadfast on his deen. And we see that as a sign that's right now. You can't, who can do anything without having a debit card or a credit card or you, whenever you pay any bill, there's some riba attached to it. Oh, you can't, you always have to have a picture ID when pictures are haram. You can't even turn on your phone without hearing music. Right? Or your computer. So it's very difficult to hold fast and hold on to your religion. Then it goes on to tell us, many of the leaders, there will be many leaders, but very, very few trustworthy people. Do I need to say more? Bastards will increase. That means zina. There will be children from Zina, and there will be lots of bastards, and we see that. We see that, especially in the West. The chiefs of tribes and nations will be hypocrites, the most vile and very immoral. There will be chiefs and nobles 
of the markets and there all the people in the marketplace will be sinners. There will be many police. Do we see that today? The high offices will go to the undeserving. Young boys will rule. Trade and commerce will spread very much. It will spread to the such extent that a woman will help her husband in trading, in the business. I just said my wife helps me in business. So these are things, it's not uncommon. Women work nowadays. Take that out your mouth. And you know, and actually, the, we say this all the time, the early man never stopped to take a chance to, to advise us on our manners. They used to tell us, you're in more need of lessons in good manners than you are in needs of lessons in fiqh. Always, if you get the opportunity, correct the good manners. Because if the people, when they lose their manners, that's when you see them being very, very corrupt and very ugly in their, in their habits. Okay? So, you guys, you grown men, there's a thing called abatha. Fi'lun abath, where somebody is just, you know, touching for no reason, scratching and sticking his hair in his mouth or taking his clothes and chewing on it. You're not child. You're not children. A child, he can't, he can't, he's tasting it. What is this? Okay. What is that? You no, know, your babies do that, right? You're not babies. You, you, you guys, if you're over 15, you're a grown man. You're a grown young lady if you're, you have your menses. You shouldn't act like little children and not have any control. Be so compulsive, so unconscious of your movements. You should sit up like young people. You should say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, when you deal with your adults and not feel like you're, you know, it's like, some, I shouldn't say that. You ask somebody, hey, young man, what time is it? Huh? <laughs> what? It's ignorant. Yeah. That's, that's very poor mannered. It's very poor mannered. You come to listen to a lecture. That's not how you sit. That's not how you sit. That's not very attentive. That's not respectful at all. You have to have good manners. You have to have good manners. This shows your true character. Okay? People will cheat when they're given measure, meaning that when you measure out, instead of it being one pound, they give you a little less. That's a mutaffif. He's, he's, he's always stealing a little bit from you, just a little bit, taking a couple of cents, this type of thief. The habit and custom, dig this, the habit and custom of writing will increase, but education would only be to further worldly gains. Let me say that again. The habit and custom of writing would increase. Hold on. Oh, y'all didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> what do people do all the time? You didn't get it. I pulled out my phone. You see that the people do this all the time. Hold on. Let me. And they're writing. What are they doing? They're texting. They're writing all the time to the point that it's, it's rude. And, but is education happening for the purpose of their dean? Not really. Most people are getting their education so they can get some worldly gain. And so this, we see this one happening all over. The Qur'an would be turned into a tool for songs and music. We see this on YouTube a lot of times. You know, sometimes now when some of the young people, they mean good, but they want to uh, make a movie, so they put the Qur'an in there and they have the guys riding, so they made the Qur'an like a nasheed for the, 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 the mujahideen or some particular point in a, in, a, in a commercial or infomercial or something like that. As opposed to like the thicken. There's a way you have to do it that makes it good, and there's a way that you can do it that make it bad. And Allah knows best. There will be an abundance of those who recite the Quran in a singing way in order to show off, gain fame, and earn wealth. There will be a scarcity. There will be very few people that know fiqh. Very few fuqaha. I would dare say, if we look at this whole room right here, how many people have studied one whole book of fiqh and can explain each chapter? And as young men, young people, or especially the teenagers, who swear they want their rights, how many of you know your rights or know what the law is for you in every aspect of your life, just based on a basic fiqh book? Most people don't get past zakah before they toss the book in the corner. They do tahara or iman, tahara, salah, salm and Ramadan. And then when they want to make umrah hard, they read a couple of things about umrah hard, and then they go say, I'm going to figure it out when I get there. 
I'll pay the guy to guide me. Nothing else is read. The fit of buying or renting or any of this stuff, this stuff is unknown to the normal youngster. And the older people don't review. Because it used to be the habit to learn this stuff when we were younger, so at least they were exposed to it. But the revising of it, finding out what was actually from the sunnah and what was wrong, or they didn't have it quite so right, we don't do that. So this is, this is right here, a scarcity of people who know the fiqh. The ulama and scholars will be killed. There will be a lot of suicides. And people will prefer death to gold. One of the things that we notice, in the richest societies, you have the higher amounts of suicide. Needless to say, Saddle is one of the highest places where people commit suicide. It's amazing. The latter people of this ummah will curse the former. The trustworthy will be treated as cheats and the treacherous shall be called trustworthy. This is what we see, strangers will meet, I'm sorry, goodness and piety will be considered bad and evil will be regarded as good. You know, the ma'roof will be seen as munkar and the munkar will be ma'roof. This, maybe you don't understand this. If you look at the theme of any movie, right? Who watches movies here? Oh, come on guys, don't lie. Okay? Everybody, you watch these movies, you see the movies. On. What's the theme in the movie? Is there a righteous man in the movie? No, the best thief is the, is the star of the show. The best fornicator, the nakedest girl, is the co-star. All the, whoever, if you look at it, the theme, the killer, he's the guy you're rooting for. Right? The murderer, the thief. All this stuff, the themes of these, these movies have you rooting for the bad guy. And if it's a movie about something that's good, ah, oh, that's boring. I don't want to watch that, it's corny. It's a chick flick. That's what they call it, right? I don't, don't front. Strangers will be treated well, but the rights of relatives will be neglected. Subhanallah. And we notice this. People will, if you come, the people will be very nice to you. If they don't know you, assalamualaikum akhi, like we treated Chris real nice. What's happening, Chris? Five o'clock, accept Islam. Your mother, what you want, ma? Yo, Abby, come on, I'm busy. No time for them. We don't want to talk to them. We don't want to show respect for them. They're always talking. Don't worry about it. Let's go. So we treat the stranger with all this preference and deference, but we treat our parents, our relatives, our aunts and uncles, we don't want to talk to them. And the older ones are the same way. When we get on the phone to talk to them overseas, we don't want to talk to them. They always want some money. They always want some money. They over there, they'll get over it. Hang up. They think there's a problem with the phone. They know there ain't no problem with the phone. So we have to have some more respect for our, because this is a sign of the last day. The wife will be obeyed, but parents will be disobeyed. The wife will be obeyed, but parents will be disobeyed. So we're talking about a lot of mama's boys here. A lot of mama's girls. And the father is out of the picture. Do we see that in American society now? Big time. If a man goes and says he wants to get just something like welfare, they, won't, they don't want the man to be on the welfare, they want the wife to be on the welfare. And they put her. On, on the front. They'll even tell him, look, if you get rid of the guy, you'll get more money. Don't they tell him? They tell him, look, just don't put him on there. You be the head of the household. When you put the head of household, put your name, we'll give more money. If you put him there, it's going to take a decrease. Oh, okay, but we're just going to do it like this, so they just know. And then it's, it's my money! My name's on that! Problems. This is the signs of the last day. There will be noise and a commotion in the masjids and people will discuss worldly affairs there. Astaghfirullah, this is happening. Only those who are known will be treated with the salams. This happens in the land of the Muslims. If you come from over here in the United States, we give salams when we see, most of the time, at least in New York, if you see anybody, you say, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, because you don't see the Muslims so much. I don't know how to, if they do it like that here in Seattle. But if you go overseas in the land of the Muslims, even if you're in Mecca, you walk past somebody and say, Salaamu Alaikum, they say, yes? You need some? Like some? Like, no, I was just saying salams. What's wrong with that guy, you know? I mean, he's saying salams. They're not, they're not used to it. They're not used to it that way. So, 
you know, this is bad habit. We should give salams. Afshu salam abaynakum. We should push the salams to each other. Divorce will be very common. Divorce will be very common. Do we see this? What? People be, one of the main reasons, I deal with divorce a lot, almost every other day. One of the main reasons for divorce is selfish. People are selfish. The parents are selfish. And they don't care about anything but themselves. They don't care about the family, they don't care about the children, just me. And that's one of the main reasons for divorce. You young people, divorce is supposed to be a real, serious, sacred, you know, institution. It's half your religion for you men. It's half your deen. You have to take it serious. You can't marry a girl and just don't like something about her and get rid of her. It doesn't go like that. You know, you have to put time in. Don't take this, this thing lightly. The pious will keep themselves away while the lowly and base people will abound in the limelight. We see this on the internet a lot. You'll see a lot of the, 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 the knowledgeable people, they don't, they're not on the internet with these different things. And then you find that the uh, chat rooms and these different websites where people are talking back and forth, giving all types of, I mean, it's loaded with all these different things. And if you go there, sometimes people send me a link. I go there and you see these people don't even know what they're talking about. But they're, 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 they're having this thing. They have not studied anything, but they're, they're putting their comments and everything like this. This is dangerous. This is the worst trick you can do because the shaitan, he has levels of tricks. His main trick is to get you to say, What? That you say about Allah what you don't know. This is the main trick of shaitan. That you say about Allah what you do not know. This is the ultimate of shirk. Some people are saying, well, shirk is the worst thing. No, the worst thing in practice is that you say about Allah what you don't know. Because that's what shirk is. When you say Allah has a partner, you're saying about Allah what you don't know. When you say as part of democracy that, you know, it's religion only deals with the, the, the religious, the ibadah, the worship, and has no place in secular affairs, then you're saying about Allah what you don't know. What's the longest ayah in the Qur'an? What does it deal with? What? I can't, debt. Dane. Is a debt, according to the Western standards, is it a religious thing or is it a secular thing? It's supposedly secular. But it's the longest ayah in the Qur'an. So they're saying about Allah, saying that religion should stay only with the worship. They're saying about Allah what they don't know. And this is the concept, if, you don't, if you're not following me, the concept of separation between church and state. There is no separation between church and state in Islam. It's all dealing with Islam. The whole thing. But the, the concept of, 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 of modernity is that religion has its place over there. Don't bring it over here in our daily affairs. No. There are no daily affairs that don't have anything to do or everything to do with your Islam. So to say about Allah what you don't know is the major, the biggest sin you can commit and the biggest trick of the shaitan. So you have to know about this thing. You have to know about it. People will take pride in erecting tall buildings and in competing with each other in these projects. Today I went to the Space Needle, I think that's what it was called. The Space Needle, and I believe it was, the, the, I was told it was the first humongous, tall, erected Space Needle in the United States. They have one in New York as well, and different places around the world. Don't we see this now? Everybody's bragging, oh, my, my country has the tallest building in the world, and we were just talking about Mecca now. They have right outside the Kaaba, they have this humongous building. It's now the third largest in the world. If you think about tall buildings, all you think about is either New York or Dubai. You know, they have these humongously tall, hum big buildings. Or Malaysia had one for a while that was, I think, the tallest in the world, right? Or Indonesia, one of the, the, the Asian countries. So, sorry? It was Malaysia. Okay, Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. So we see this now, skyscrapers. People putting these tall, erecting buildings in the sky. Wine will, will, will abound and it will be called Nabith. People will, will use interest when trading and bribery will be called a gift. Now we notice what this is now is the people changing the names of things. No longer will they call it a bribe, they call it a gift. They won't call it wine, they call, let's say, what do they call it? Wine coolers or they call it something else. 
You know, they, they change the name of things in order to trick you into utilizing it. There will be, oh, the new terminologies, immodesty and shameless con conduct will be very common. We see this now. We see this, like I said, with even the Muslims. Just the way they dress, just the way they behave, we behave very immodest sometimes. We, need, we can check ourselves with this regard. Invitation would be extended to enjoy the company of women along with food and drink. We see a lot of the young guys say, yo, are you going to go to that conference? Are you going to go over here? Yeah, any girls going to be there? And so the girls say the same thing. Are you going to go? Honey, who, who, any guys going to be there? So they're not going for the lecture. They want to see if there's any guys there. Let's go to the bathroom. Oh, I'm outside the bathroom waiting for my friend. And so they're there just to see the guys. You think somebody's stupid? We wasn't teenagers, we didn't understand that. And we're not saying we, oh, we, we can do it, you can't. No, we're trying to save you from yourselves. The fast one is going to get burnt out. The fast one is going to get involved in something that they don't know what it is. They don't know the reality of it. You have to save yourself and control your desires. That's all it is. Controlling yourself. Unexpected deaths will be very common. How many people we know having strokes and heart attacks? It used to be someone got old or they got sick and they died. Then, nowadays, sudden death. People dying of heart attack. People catching cancer. People getting AIDS. Then all of a sudden, they're dead. And this may not be something that young people think can happen to them, but it's happening. Women, oh, people will ride on thick cushions to the doors of the masjids. Sometimes we don't understand these things. What do you think this is talking about? Cars. You know, that nice thick cushion we're sitting on riding to the masjid. So this is something that is happening. We have these cars. Women will wear garments, but they will be naked because the dress will be thin and or tight fitting. Do we see this today? Well, I mean, we don't even need to talk about it. The ladies will have their hair tied in buns or humps on their heads. What this is means is that sometimes the ladies, they do a thing so they can show you that they got hair. Okay? They do. So they tie it. Sometimes, see, I got daughters. You know, I see this, this stuff that they do. You got to stop them at the door, guys. Hey, where you go? Get that, change that thing off your head. So they put the heel on, but the hair is there. No, you know what I'm supposed to see? It's not supposed, even your headpiece is not supposed to show what your hair is like under your head, under the khimar. Even your headpiece is not supposed to show the shape of your hair. So you have to arrange it so that's not seen. And the men have to be slick and recognize when this is happening with their daughters. And not allow these uh, on the top ponytails or buns. And tell them to take it down. Do something else. Oh, well, then you can't go. Once they hear that a couple of times, they'll be very creative. And they'll find ways of making it come where they don't show the shape of their hair. Understanding the objective here. They will wear, okay, these people wear this in them to tempt men in themselves, okay? These people will not enter paradise, and they won't even sell, smell the, the fragrance. Also, it says that the believer will be more disgraced than a slave or a slave girl. This means that, and it's not because of our little bit of numbers. What are we called today? Come on, what's the worst derogatory thing they call us nowadays or suspect us of? Terrorist. Terrorist. It's almost a haram word to say in America now, right? If you, you know, Kafirs, they can say terrorist, 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 terrorist. You know? I'm making their mics go on. <laughs> They're flipping on. But as soon as a Muslim say it, who? Oh, it's taboo. Like we can't say jihad. If you say that word, <gasps> shh. They're trying to make the language haram. For you to even have that idea, pretty soon they're going to start locking you up. If they ask you, say, do you think uh, jihad is lawful in Islam? You say, yes, you go to jail. That's what's going to, that's the future. That's the future what they're going to say. Right now, they're, they're, it's kind of like, just don't say the word. Don't talk about it. Let it disappear. 
So this is what's going on. The Muslims are being or are looked at as very disgraced, very you know, ugly people. It's terrorists. These are the, 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 the minor signs that we can guesstimate and say are happening now. Sometimes we, we can't necessarily call it. Sometimes we can clearly call it. Some things are up to perspective. These are those minor ones. The near signs, those signs that no one can, can reject, are basically about 9 or 10. The first one being the coming of the Mahdi. When the Mahdi comes, that's clear. The emergence of the Dajjal. When the Dajjal comes, that's going to be clear too. Or maybe it won't be. Because we say, who thinks when the Mahdi comes, then we'll say, oh yeah, now we know it's close to the last day. You think that way? Huh? What if some guy stood up here and said, you know what, I am the Mahdi. Would you believe him? It's a fitna, right? How do you know to believe that this guy is the Mahdi or not? This happened before in Islam. Not too many years ago, someone thought he was the Mahdi. And he went to the Kaaba, pulled out rifles, and took over the Kaaba. Not some hundred years ago, about 25 years ago. Not that long ago. They took over the Kaaba and they fought. <coughs> to Sheikh bin Baz wrote the fatwa to go and allow them to go in there and kill them and take them hostage. And there were some famous people in there. Sheikh Muqbil himself, Rahimahullah, he was one of the people that took over the masjid, took over the haram. And he took his dissertation Rahimahullah, he took his, his masters in chains because he was arrested. He took it out. He said, don't send me back yet. Let me sit before the, the board and take my masters. So they let him take his masters in chains. They didn't really blame the people because they said, hey, we saw the signs of the Mahdi. So we followed them. And they allowed it. And he's still a great sheikh, Rahimahullah. But he was with those people who took over the Kaaba. So there can be, if this, if this great sheikh could get confused in thinking that someone was the Mahdi, what about you and me? Because a lot of times people say, yo, I want to be around with the Mahdi. I'm going to do this, that, and everything. I'm going to be with the Mahdi. We're going to go. We're going to kill. We're going to... Ah, come on. You don't know that. He might be there and you might reject him. Me, I want to be dead. That's the best thing for me. I don't even want to be here. Because remember, that's going to happen on the worst of people. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know these guys don't really like us, right? I love you, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, let me erase this. <laughs> he has this thing here, and he puts three minutes, five minutes, zero time one time he gave me. <laughs> So, so he's erasing the thing I did there. Anyway, so these signs, you, 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 you might think that you want to be around for these things, but it may be dangerous for you. The emergence of the Dajjal. I don't want to be around for the Dajjal. The descent of Isa ibn Maryam. Who thinks that's going to be cool too? Who wants to see Isa come down? What if some guy came down and then he was in Harlem talking about he's Jesus? There's a guy like that too. He's on 125th Street, and he, he walks up and down. I mean, for years, this guy's been walking down 125, talking about he's Jesus. You know, one day I saw him out in a dress, in a, what do you call it? You know, the American, they wear a the white dress when they get married. This guy was in a white dress, directing traffic on 125th Street, talking about he's Jesus. Do you want to be tested? No. But these are the things that are going to happen during the last day. Then the Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. Even Isa ibn Maryam is going to retreat, and the, the Muslims that are with him are going to retreat from Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. Even them, they're not going to be able to take them. Do you understand? So this is going to be a great fitna for the Ummah. When the sun rises up in the west, when the beast, this huge beast, comes to the earth and he arises, and a fire that will erupt. We think about a fire because, you know, the Arabs, they translate this a fire. But you know what they're really talking about? Does anybody know when they're talking about a fire? They're talking about a volcano. They're talking about, this is what they're referring to. When you read the, the, the text, it's not a fire. That's a, when they mention about one fire, it came and it, and it took over a mountain. The whole mountain was on fire. 
They're talking about it clouded the sun, volcanic ash. Do you understand now? So these earthquakes are going to be coming and causing all this, these volcanoes to erupt. And it's going to be this great big fire, which will start in one place and continue onward. So it says it will erupt in your mouth and spread and spread and spread. These are the signs of the last day. We tell them to you, this, I mean, it would be beautiful to explain them in more detail. But the time doesn't allow it. A lot of you guys don't have the stomach to go through a thorough study of each one. Why are we talking about them? Why? Because one of the signs of the last day is that people are going to forget the signs of the last day. There's going to be a time where people don't even know the signs of the last day. So we don't want that to happen on our shift. Get it? We have an obligation. And our obligation is to try to empower you, for you to understand what these signs are. And for you, this is the Tawasso the, Bilhaq. The, the, you know? This is what we want to leave back as a legacy of the reality that will follow on this planet, in this life. For us to tell you, for you to tell your children, and to let them to look for these things. And hopefully, it won't fail and the message won't be lost on your shift. I've had a great time here. Alhamdulillah, it's even greater that we have a Muslim brother accept Islam. There could be no better time that we can have because, you know, that's what it's all about. And uh, inshallah, I'll see you guys some other time. I guess there's no time for questions, so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah forgive me, and I hope you guys forgive me if I said anything that offended you all. Anything that I said that was correct, that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his tawfiq. And any mistakes I made is from me and the slips and that, I, that humans make and from shaitan inspiring them to say things. Assalamu alaikum.